Uh, from 1931 to this day, the Mara Children's has been the only public children's hospital on the south side. The ward was a big open ward, a number of cots down the side, both sides, and perhaps cots in the middle. And it was called the Nightingale Ward. I started as an 18, a barely 18-year-old at the Children's Hospital in 1952. Um, the hospital then was only 21 years old. And it was, it, was, it was a big place. I was very unsure when I started nursing whether that was really what I wanted. And, but I thought I could try, I could try it and um, I fell in love with it the minute I started with, with the children. Most of our contact with patients was just getting to understand children. And that was a very, and it, I very quickly learned that this is where I wanted, in the hospital and as nurse, was where I wanted to spend the rest of my life. The pharmacy was uh, beside it for a long time, so I've seen a lot going on there. In fact, we used to have a window which opened into the casualty department in the early days, and we could look across there and see Sister Mary St. Bernard um, looking after the children and chasing up the ones who were running away because <laughs> they knew they were going to see a doctor and they didn't want to. I came nursing in 1964 and arrived here and I was commissioned to the Children's Hospital and myself and Carmel Kelly, another country girl who started the same day as myself, we were in the medical ward, we sent to the Children's Medical Ward it was, and it was um, looked after by Sister Mary Matilde. And we were the juniors, so we did all the work for the junior nurses. We went on with what was happening in the ward, and it was mainly at the beginning, it was being kind to the little ones. There were a lot of little children there crying for their mothers, so we tried to be their mother, their other mother. In those days, the sisters did all of the hospital work, all of the professional hospital work, and so we were on call for for children who were admitted as a result of accidents or sudden illness, meningitis. And so I did that kind of diagnosis in the middle of the night. I came here when I was 18 years of age in 1939, January 1939. I didn't go to the Mother Children's till I became a Sister of Mercy and went to the Children's in 1948. And I left there in 88 and uh, I went straight to the Children's Operating Theatre and I was in the theatre for about 23 years. My favourite memories would be being associated with the children. Yeah. But I loved, I loved being with the children. The longer I worked there, the more I realised that uh, paediatric nursing was a very much a specialty. As, as with the adults, they could tell you their symptoms. With the children, you had to observe. I think that was the main skill I had to learn about paediatrics. Yeah. I was very close to her, and I just loved walking into a ward and seeing her bending over a child and the way the child and the family were responding to her. In the middle of my nursing training, and I actually was one of the lucky ones that was assigned to the children's for a year. Um, and I loved kids and just was so delighted to be down there. I think that the Mata Children's Hospital should be um, proud of its achievements in looking after these kids. Uh, when that extra yard was needed, um, the staff at the Mata would always do it. Uh, it may have been uh, something that had to be done in a hurry to ensure that the child's management was appropriate or it may have been to research a particularly difficult a problem and I'd, I'd like to hope that the um, Sisters of Mercy are proud of the work that we've done. Um, we're certainly proud of it and um, we enjoyed working in the spirit of the martyr as well. started here as a very young nurse, very shy nurse who'd worked in a couple of hospitals, wanted to work with the children so came here and met the lovely Sister Dorothea, got a job and have been here ever since. So my very first day sitting in baby's ward um, the supervisor came past and asked me my name and when I gave her my surname she said no no I'd like your first name so I told her my name was Anna and, um, and she introduced herself by her first name and said welcome to the Marta 
and I guess that was really different for me. I knew from that point on that this was no other hospital I'd ever worked in. The Mater Children's Hospital was a smaller, friendlier hospital, though almost a boutique uh, type of uh, hospital um, where you tended to know uh, most of the other doctors and if you needed something done you could ring up and organise it and there wouldn't be uh, layers of uh, people to say no. So it, um, it was, had a very nice atmosphere and that's continued into this hospital. Well I think everyone has a lot of respect for each other mm. and even even if they don't, they're not the best of friends in the workplace, they sort of prioritise the patient's needs above their own and um, get on with the job and make sure that the patients have the best care that they, they need at the time. Mm. And I think there's a lot of value and respect between you know different disciplines, so medical and nursing, and um, I think we value how we work together as a team. It's the Sorry, atmosphere team. that you hear and that you see and you're involved with. I mean, the staff are just That's phenomenal, brilliant. phenomenal staff. Their attitude to everything, um, it's the teamwork that they have. Um, you just can't fault it, you know. It's it's that it's a wonderful place Lovely to be. Family atmosphere. So the volunteers have been amazing in my time here at the Mater Children's, and we have particular volunteers that come to work every week, and they contribute to our team significantly, and they're sort of part of the family uh, of our ward families. There is a something special about a martyr way of doing things, an ethos that uh, certainly is uh, passed on from the Sisters of Mercy, but it's just as much about the people that have been part of the martyr story for decades. There's also a way, I think, that the community embrace martyr and make it theirs as well, and that puts a unique touch around what happens at martyr uh, and what has happened for over 80 years. We had one wonderful thing, and they were fates that I think all of us will remember. The sisters crocheted and knitted and did all sorts of things. And uh, the friends in the community brought in fruit and vegetables and other saleable goods. And uh, it was a day of excitement when we had the fete. Well, we had fates. We'd have fates every other day. We're always making cakes and jams and pickles for these stalls. My association with the martyr goes back a long way, actually. I was a patient um, in the 60s here at the Mater and then I had my first job as a doctor was to come to the Mater Children's Emergency Department and I guess that sort of formulated my sort of desire to do paediatrics. It is a wonderful um, thing for a, uh, you know as a professional as a, as a doctor to, uh, to live through that experience and uh, in fact uh, I had a, uh, a guy come to see me with his child and <coughs> he said to me, um, when he saw me, he said, uh, my, he said I, I saw your father when I was a child. And I said, really? He said, yep. He said, did he do a good job? And he said, oh, he did a great job. You know, now I've got this little boy. So he said he did a really good job. And I didn't say anything, but I thought that's pretty strange because my father was a teacher. And, <laughs> and in fact, it was me that <coughs> he'd seen, uh, not that I dissuaded him of that uh, illusion. I uh, enjoyed the feeling of youth. The collegiality of um, the different doctors, nurses, even volunteers, cleaning staff, you seem to know all of them. So I think that was the joy of working here. It's a fascinating place to work, I think. Um, it's a privilege to work there. I guess we see our patients at our most vulnerable and um, with raw emotions. And I think that within that chaos, we're able to contribute to them and um, provide care in their, some of their most vulnerable periods. I'm Jacob and I'm eight years old and my, my sickness is CF. I like how the nurses play with me when I get bored and they can look after me. Over the years he's had periods where he's in for longer than um, others. He spent one year where he spent 27 weeks out of the year up here. Um, uh, but at the moment we're doing at least three admissions a year for three weeks at a time. There's been many times where I've woken up in the morning and I think, where's Jacob? And then you hear some big noise outside and it's the nurses running up and down the hallways with him and playing with him. I think that's been a very big help having them there. They're always there, like if you need to talk to them or um, 
always trying to work out ways to make things easier for Jacob and I think they've been a very big part and a very big help for our family. You kind of lose yourself when you actually become a part of other people's lives. So, uh, you know, you, you see a lot of courage, a lot of determination um, in children and parents and grandparents and uh, yeah, it's just, you've, you've become part of the team. So it's, it's a really amazing experience. As a paediatric nurse, you see a lot of really difficult uh, times that families go through and also as a team that uh, the nursing teams are exposed to. And they're probably some of the mem strongest memories that I have where the team has really come together and supported each other uh, during those really tough times when they're exposed to things that some people would never see in their lives. Clearly uh, community respond to the needs of the youngest members of society, babies and children, and that's one of the ways in which people are drawn to support MARTA Children's. The charity work I also do at the MARTA, which is Operation Smile, and the MARTA's been very supportive of that over the last 20 years. So we bring many cases from overseas, and the MARTA helps us manage those children, and it's always delightful to see them go back without a deformity, and we have to thank the MARTA for their participation with that. The heritage of the surgical services, uh, landmark treatment for spina bifida, foundation principles in orthopaedic treatment, head and neck surgery, neurosurgery, craniofacial surgery. It all started here at South Brisbane. I was brought to the Marta Children's Hospital from straight from a hospital in the Netherlands uh, and I had had a brain infection with a lot of complications uh, that had left me paralysed. Without the friendly staff, um, without the fantastic, amazing staff, exceptional staff, um, ultimately it would just be a building. What I enjoyed most was, you know, the resilience of parents and how they manage um, children or looked after their children, particularly with complex needs. And I, you know, always admired how parents could manage, you know, with wheelchairs, other toddlers in tow coming to outpatients from long distances. I graduated with my Bachelor of Arts last year, at the end of last year. Um, I did actually walk for graduation, so my neurologist, Dr Wallace, if he's watching, uh, he told me I would probably never walk again, but that he wouldn't be surprised if I did. And ultimately I did. I was only walking a couple metres and it was with a frame and my physiotherapist was just behind me. But I walked. The manner in which the, the care is delivered, I've only been here for a couple of years um, and it's been amazing and a privilege to watch the level of care that it's, is delivered and the manner in which the care is delivered. Uh, and it really is the model values that one sees on a daily basis. Uh, these are not values that you can impose, they're values that come within. And I guess that's uh, some of the excitement for the future is that these values will go with those staff. There's a legacy of 83 years and there's no doubt that that legacy will go with them and I certainly look forward to working with uh, colleagues and friends in the future in terms of delivering children's care. What the sisters and the mother have taught me over the years have made me who I am today and I don't think I'd be that person if I didn't have that influence but more importantly whether I work at the MARTA or I work at LCCH those things are me now, so they will go with me from wherever I am, wherever I work, whoever I look after, they will always be there. It's been a great place and the, uh, some of the best years of my life have been here at South Brisbane. I think the challenge for all MARTA staff, whether we're working in the MARTA Children's or MARTA Mothers or anywhere else, um, is to carry on the way that the Sisters of Mercy delivered care. Their focus, not surprisingly, is on mercy, on compassionate care, on really understanding the individual that they're caring for, understanding their social circumstances and delivering not just technical care of high standard but genuine care, genuine empathy um, and really uh, going that extra mile. I believe that all the staff working here, they give, they, they give of themselves so generously and, uh, and with their time and their their experience, and but it's their great love for the for for the children. Treasure your heritage, treasure what you've learned, keep the values, because they will be very useful anywhere you go, and they will impact on people's lives. I know that the values and mission of the Sisters of Mercy 
are as alive today as they were back in 1931. The practices of the past have changed, they had to change, but the mission endures through the great people of the Mata today. They carry the mission and I am content to look into the future.